Hi, this is Terry. Let's uh, knock out Chapter 3 and see what we got going here. Um, the first item, going concern. The idea here is, with this uh, uh, principle in accounting, is that that allows us to do depreciation. If we didn't have the going concern, and we knew that a business was going to end at two years, then we would have to turn around and, um, oh my gosh, with all these updates here. Uh, with the going concern, we'd have to turn around and depreciate over two years. But the issue is that in the absence of other information, we assume that all corporations are going to go on infinitely. Therefore, if we need to do a 40-year mortgage, we can. Periodicity then becomes the second item. Um, that allows us to divide our accounting periods into uh, quarters and into months. So therefore, even though the... Um, each month has a, a different number of days in it. We can still divide by a twelfth and and deal with you know one twelfth, two twelfths, etc. The uh, before we publish our financial statements, then we will have twelve twelfths, which makes one year. And therefore, the fact that the there aren't the same number of days in in each month be becomes a moot point. The third item is a fiscal year, and fiscal year or quarters. Um, the fiscal year is the fact that we work with 12 months or 365 days, but the company can set when their fiscal year uh, begins and when it ends. So a company like Toys R Us would never have their year end December 31st because they're still right in the middle of their heavy season. So Toys R Us would be more likely to have their fiscal year in the last day of February, last day of March, something like that. The matching principle is a huge one, so let's turn on my little red marker here and then also circle this baby because this is this is a huge issue. If if nine times out of ten, if you if you want to know what principle kicks in, it's the matching principle. And the matching principle says that you must uh, record revenues and expenses in the time period of which they occur, which is, gives us the whole issue of having to do adjusting entries. So when our year ends, we need to make sure all revenues and expenses for that period get into year one, all the revenues and expenses for the second period or second year go, go into that year. Um, more on that later here and shortly. The revenue recognition. Let me get rid of that little guy there. Revenue recognition is when do we re recognize revenue? Well, since we're under an accrual basis, the idea is that uh, we recognize revenue uh, as soon as we have completed the job and done our part, irregardless of when we receive cash. Uh, same thing with expenses we recognize the, that we have a telephone expense as soon as we get the bill irregardless of when we write the check to pay for the bill. Two more terms are deferrals and cruels and deferrals are when we get the cash paid up front but we haven't done any service such as uh, gift certificates that we get um, we we record the fact that we receive the cash. It isn't till later that we perform the service that people redeem their gift certificates. And um, then accruals is no, I don't have this right. No, 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 no. I'm going to have to stop here and fix this. Okay, this is Terry again. Um, uh, it was just me being silly here. Uh, I do, do have it correct. The idea with uh, deferrals is cash is received or paid up front. So we receive or have to prepay up front. Uh, accruals are we're going to record the revenue or expense now and then cash will be received or paid later. So my fault, I, I had my notes right, I just wasn't interpreting my own notes here. Let's move on to adjusting entries um, and give you a couple examples. So we'll switch over to our red pen here. And let's say for instance with supplies, 
that we have ten dollars worth of supplies in the account and we go out and buy a hundred more so we're going to have already made a journal entry to debit supplies and pay cash for say a hundred dollars now what we need to do because it's the end of our fiscal year is to make an adjusting entry and what principal kicks in that's the matching principal we need to get the expense in the proper time period so if we go look and see that there's twenty dollars worth of supplies left in the supply cabinet then we know that we must have consumed ninety so if our beginning balance to our ending balance goes up we know that we didn't use all of what we purchased but we still need to make this journal entry so what we would do is we would debit supplies expense for ninety dollars and then take supplies and reduce it by ninety that's our concept of an adjusting entry if we didn't do that if we didn't expense then we would be showing this whole hundred and ten dollars as supply sitting on our balance sheet we also would not have recorded our expense so if you fail to to make this journal entry your assets would be overstated your expenses would be understated and because your expenses are understated your net income would be overstated a second example here then is wages and let's say that we're sitting here with this time slot Monday through Friday and that this is the end of our fiscal year is right here or the end of our yeah the end of our month and or end of our fiscal year well what we've done is we have worked six out of the ten days in a two-week period we're not going to make payroll until the fourth of April so what we need to do because of the matching principle is take those six days and put them into a payable so what we record is uh, wage expense and I'm just going to use days instead of numbers so for six days and then we would put that into wages payable for six days whatever that dollar amount is we would make this on the uh, March uh, what March 31st so th whoops 331 then on April 4th so April 4th then we would record a wage expense for four more days so that that expense gets into the current month we're going to take the wages payable off the books so that the previous six days here gets canceled out and then we would pay cash for all ten days does that make sense that the first expense here has to get into the March the month of March this additional four days of expense has to be in April because of the matching principle ultimately the wages payable for six days and wages payable for six days cancel each other out and then we pay cash for the ten days that we owe sitting here on the fourth of, of April All right prepaid insurance prepaid rent same concept we start at uh, this point here and here's our calendar year and we buy an insurance policy so let's just make this easy and say that we're gonna buy this on July 1st and what we'll do is we will debit prepaid rent or prepaid insurance and we'll make it twelve hundred dollars so it's nice and even and we pay cash of twelve hundred dollars now it's December 31st and we need to remember to make that adjusting entry again because of the matching principle that six months has gone by so we need to record rent expense for six hundred dollars and take out of prepaid rent six hundred dollars so if we looked at this prepaid rent account we would have started with twelve hundred we would have taken out six hundred taken out six hundred 
we'd have a $600 balance sitting on the balance sheet for the next period. Depreciation, next concept here, is all about uh, depreciating our uh, assets that are subject to wear and tear. So this is going to be building and equipment and land improvements and those kind of items. What we want to do though when we go out and buy a building is if we spend $100,000 on that building we never want to lose this historical cost. So what we want to do then is any time that we depreciate we'll record depreciation expense and let's just say it's two thousand dollars then the credit will be to accumulated depreciation two thousand that accumulated depreciation is a contra account so we would say building less accumulated depreciation well when we first buy it it's zero now that we have put two thousand in then our two thousand would go into the accumulated depreciation we'd have a $98,000 net value and that's called book value. Other, book, uh, other textbooks call that carrying value. So this is an example of using a contra account to give us a net value which is called book value. The next item, unearned revenue, is uh, same thing, same concept for gift certificates and magazine subscriptions is you've got to get that money ahead of time. So if I turn to you and said I want you to to create a sculpture of me in marble and you'd say that's fine but I need all the money up front. So I give you a hundred thousand dollars to make this statue and then I'm going to put it into unearned revenue of a hundred thousand. So if you look at this, assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity, your asset goes up. Unearned revenue is a liability. It is not a revenue account. It's a liability. Then when you complete this statue, then you'll take it out of unearned revenue, hundred thousand, and then record it as revenue, hundred thousand. So then the liability goes down and owner's equity goes up. So you have to remember that unearned revenue is a liability because if, I, if you never created that statue in marble, you would have to give me my money back. Next item then, uh, adjusted trial balance. After we make all our adjustments and we're completely done and, and ready to finish out the year, then we do an adjusted trial balance. We just take the ledger accounts and list all the re uh, assets, then liabilities, owner's equity, revenues, and expenses. And because our debits always have to equal our credits, the trial balance is exactly that. It's, uh, uh, you know, we're looking to see if the, if the accounts balance. It's a much more formal process that accountants do, so I kind of threw this together real quick that what accountants will do is they will set up a trial balance and just list all the accounts in the ledger. Then what we just finished doing with the supplies and the unearned revenue, et cetera, et cetera, then you put in all your adjustments. When you combine these together, then you get the adjusted trial balance and then accountants will put into the right categories any items that are balance sheet and then any items that are income statement. So you're going to put in all the accounts. I just have three or four of them thrown in here for an example. From um, a Google search then I found this nice little picture that gives you the same concept that you have a trial balance then what you would do is you would record the adjusting entries. You would post those adjusting entries to the ledger then when that ledger is updated then you do an adjusted trial balance to get the new and updated figures. Now that we've got all of our accounts adjusted we prepare all our financial statements which is a good test question when you know what's the sequence in order so we're going to do our adjustments, do our adjusted trial balance um, then we prepare our 
financial statements. Now our financial statements are created, what we have to do is go through one more step to close our accounts. And the accounts that we close are all our temporary. And by definition, that's revenues, expenses, and dividends. So all of them get closed to zero. What does not get closed, does not get closed, is our permanent accounts. And that, by definition, is all your balance sheet. So if we look at this, all of our revenues, we would expect to have a credit balance. So we use a temporary ca account called income summary. And what we do is we debit the revenue for whatever balance is in the revenue account and put that into income summary. If we looked at an expense or looked at all of our expenses, we would have a normal debit balance. So what we would do is credit the expense and put that into income summary. So let's say for, to make this simple that we had 10 and 6. Well now we have a balance in income summary of 4. So we've done step 1, we've done step 2. Now step 3 is to close income summary to retained earnings. So we would put 4 in here so this zeroes out and into our retained earnings account we would put our four. The last is our dividends and if our dividends were sitting here at two with a debit balance then we would put a two to zero that out and debit our retained earnings. And at this point all of our expenses have zero balances, all of our revenues have zero balances, our dividends all have zero balance, income summary has a zero balance, everything has been converted to the balance sheet which are your permanent accounts. And just to make sure then we do what's called a post-closing trial balance where we take uh, all the accounts list that have money in them and list them and make sure that our debits equal our credits. You'll notice that in this list it's all balance sheet accounts, no revenues, no expenses, and no dividends. Okay? Again, don't forget to look at the end of your chapter for your comprehensive problem because it really, really helps. Alright, see you on the next chapter.